we expect some of uh, uh, the strict measures will be relaxed. But mm -hmm. from the command center uh, where I sit, what are we seeing? We are seeing that uh, the intervention, for example, about the curfew, because we must not forget why we put it, is to slow movement so that contact tracing can be effective. Because when people are still, it's easy to know to trace uh, the people who have been in contact with the positive cases. That need has still not ended, and we need to evaluate how do we still uh, make the curfew a bit not too harsh on people mm -hmm. to allow them do business and still keep people still for contact tracing. That mm -hmm. uh, means uh, that uh, we may not expect to remove the curfew altogether, but uh, whether or not it's a discussion that is going on and we shall advise accordingly, we need to relax the timelines it's a discussion that uh, will conclude, and we are having our final meeting on Thursday about it. Mm -hmm. There are issues like uh, which we have evaluated which are effective. For example, using uh, the masks. 70% uh, of what will save mankind is use of masks. And I think uh, the government is very clear. We had uh, initial challenges of uh, the availability of masks, but now we have seen they are readily available and uh, the reduced cost. Mm -hmm. uh, nevertheless, we know that uh, the Ministry of Health has been given 300 million shillings to uh, locally acquire the nose masks that are reusable, uh, mainly for the vulnerable group. Then the last one is social distancing. Mm -hmm. That is a no-go zone. Masks and social distancing are no go zone because if we are to save mankind, those two we must observe. Besides, of course, uh, the personal hygiene and using uh, the sanitizers and uh, being clean generally. Okay, I, I, I know you're saying that it's still work in progress in terms of the discussions you're having, but when you say that you want to relax the timelines, currently the coffee begins at um, seven? 7 and ends at 5, 5. 5 a.m. Yeah. So is it that it begins, I mean, it begins later than 7 and ends earlier than 5, or what exactly would this be? Uh, let me say this, we are evaluating the entirety of circumstances. Okay. The meaning of curfew in Nairobi is very different from the meaning of curfew in Kenyaga and uh, in uh, the rural uh, setups. And uh, we are looking at all this because uh, they affect people differently. Uh, in Nairobi, for example, when uh, you say uh, people must uh, be in their houses by seven, the consequence of that is that people must close office as early as three because of traffic jams, because of use of matatus, by sheer numbers of people who live in Nairobi. And therefore, the treatment of that curfew in Nairobi must be very different from the treatment of that curfew in uh, Tana River or Taitataveta. It will be very different because uh, the conditions are different. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, we are looking at it now isolating uh, what do we want to do county by county. But the general view is you must slow down people if contact tracing must be effective. We must remember curfew is about slowing down people so that you can contact trace. Mm -hmm. There are uh, those areas that, uh, uh, if I were to ask, are no-go areas because there is no way you are going to keep social distance while you are in those. Uh, for example, mm -hmm. there is pressure to open bars. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am yet to see how you will uh, keep social distance while you are making merry mm -hmm. and still use a face mask while drinking. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, those are some of the very honest discussions we must have. Mm -hmm. There's the issue of uh, churches and mosques. Those are issues that are being looked at. So what protocols do we put together? Nairobi and Mombasa still continue to report the very high numbers. So with these new protocols, is there a possibility that uh, the cessation of movement might be lifted in any of the five counties? Our uh, first initial reaction is it shouldn't. But there are more discussion beyond uh, a command center and a medical uh, approach because I told you of the pressure also you are getting about uh, 
uh, from the other people. And if, uh, for whatever reason, that uh, that is to be lifted, then it must be accompanied by some protocol. When you are leaving Nairobi, what is it you must do? When you are entering Nairobi, what is it you must do? Mm -hmm. And uh, I still want to remind you some. The government is doing this because it wants to safeguard the lives of its people. Let's talk about, um, because in some of the estates, for instance in Nairobi, we look at a place like Kibra, the constituency itself, and now you're counting more than 200 cases of COVID. Of course, they're segregated to different um, smaller communities. What we will, will we be doing this weekend? Because yes, you've had um, the cessation of movement in Old Town and Eastly in Nairobi. What more will be done for areas like Kibra and others that have experienced a spike in the COVID-19 numbers? Whether it's Kibra, whether it is Karen, whether it's Runda, whether it's Madare, the fundamentals are the same. Mm -hmm. Nose mask, social distance. But uh, even if you supplied people with the nose masks, the choice to put it becomes personal mm -hmm. and I think uh, that's the pressure that we will be applying and uh, seeing uh, whether it continues being necessary to contain Kibra people mm -hmm. in Kibra without supporting their economic activities. We must decide what we do with Kibra. Kibra has uh, almost 200,000 people uh, or more maybe 500,000. Can you feed 500,000 people forever so that they stay where they are? You must allow them to go and uh, to go to industrial area. You must allow them to go into Kibaru. So how do you balance There's, that risk? Because as they go, they're risking passing on the infection if they, if they are positive? Some. The first answer is this. Mm -hmm. Nose mask. If all of us obeyed and decided that they will not interact without a nose mask. Probably we cut our exposure by 60%. Mm -hmm. It's a no-brainer. Let's talk about um, the challenge the Ministry of Health has been speaking about and that is contact tracing. I think sometimes towards the end of last week the Ministry said that they could not trace up to 140 persons that had tested positive how is uh, the Minister of Interior Affairs working with the Minister of Health to ensure that the people that come for mass testing, they're properly um, identified and can be properly contacted should they test positive or whichever uh, the response? Uh, the team that does con contact tracing is a multi-agency team where there are people uh, from Interior, uh, from Ministry of Health, from everybody uh, who will go and uh, use technology to get to anyone who has been in contact with a positive case. But we know uh, uh, the consequence of a person who is traced mm -hmm. is that you will get them and quarantine them for 14 days. And because of the stigma that had been put around quarantine facilities, then you find people don't voluntarily uh, bring themselves uh, if they are positive contacts of a positive case. Mm -hmm. And therefore, what government has done, one, is uh, to ensure that if you are quarantined in a government facility, you don't pay one shilling. But uh, like anything else, you will find uh, people will, uh, uh, because the first effective tool of contact tracing is your phone. Mm -hmm. uh, when you know that you are being traced, what do you do? switch it off. Mm -hmm. It becomes more and more difficult to uh, contact trace. And the appeal to Kenyans is uh, contact tracing is its primary objective is to try to isolate you from infecting your friends, your relatives and all that and putting you in a place where if you are found positive uh, you can be given uh, attention, medical attention. I don't know whether this is for you, it's for the Minister of Health, but uh, there has been concerns that, um, yes, there are people that are, have come forth, especially after uh, mass testing, uh, they subjected themselves to the test, but then again, they never receive results as long as they have not tested positive. What is that procedure supposed to be? Is it communication to only the people that turn positive or even those that are negative? When you take a result, whether it's negative or positive, it's a personal private resort that must be conveyed to you and the Ministry of Health is doing so. But uh, we must make the method of conveying the message easy 
through either a phone or through your email. I think but, we but also. Even those people that supply their contacts, they're never informed whether it's on phone or via email. Well, I would have to interrogate uh, that statement because uh, just like you are saying, I also have thousands of people who have results. So uh, sometimes it's simply two people didn't receive because of some technical hitch or because of whatever reason, mm -hmm. then we generalize that people don't receive results because I have thousands of people who have received them, including myself, mm -hmm. and I did not push for it. So I uh, think it's uh, good to know and uh, we take positively that feedback that uh, we need to check does everyone receive when they are tested and I think what you are doing is giving feedback that I'll convey to the Ministry of Health. Next week it will be three months since the first COVID-19 case was um, diagnosed in the country and the impact has been immense talking about the economy even socially. For how long do you think we can continue with this? Yes there's the risk about health but there's also the economic suffering that is affecting the people and companies are starting to close down or to fire people for how long how for how long do you think you can do this nobody has an answer to that question because uh, at least we need we know when the first covid case was reported in kenya and it is not a start stop switch for covid there is no day we will say now we are done with covid let's move on with our normal lives such a date is not coming because I see people saying post COVID as if there is a date that will come when we say now COVID is finished. There's a an airborne disease that's viral that is going to be with us for a long time. And like every other uh, pandemic, uh, either we will know how to deal with it or we will uh, have precautionary measures to ensure that it is suppressed and uh, know how do we open businesses while with it. And those are the protocols uh, we are trying to develop. However, we also want to look at uh, some positive things that have happened. And uh, I am not saying this to console uh, ourselves, because this data that uh, we have uh, at the command center. And I see a lot of pressure from people saying we are not testing enough and uh, therefore we don't know how many cases we have or we... Let me tell you this, Sam. If you are sick, whether you test or not, you will get sick. And uh, therefore, one of the ways of checking are we effective is uh, looking at our hospitals. Are we reporting more deaths? Are we reporting more sick people than before out of uh, uh, respiratory uh, diseases, pneumonia, are we reporting more? Are we reporting, are we having more people in uh, ICU? And then we compare, uh, how was it last year? Some of the diseases that uh, we used to suffer from and they used to kill people, diarrhea, cholera, are gone because we are washing our hands. We are more hygienic. Mm -hmm. There is now water being supplied to the slums. We check the deaths. Are they more? Not yet. They are not more than they were last year. They are actually less because there is no more diarrhea and there is no more cholera. We've seen your ministry, whether it's yourself or the CS, having conversations with um, people in the religious organizations. What are the possibilities of uh, resuming church attendance or mosque attendance? And how soon? Uh, some, something must give in. And uh, what we have seen is uh, pressure also uh, from uh, the churches to open up. And I think the discussion, and you had the president direct our ministry on Monday to engage with the religious leaders so that we see where is the middle ground so that you continue uh, giving spiritual nourishment to uh, your flock while still uh, keeping to the Ministry of Health protocols. And that's the discussion we are having. And the uh, possibilities are many, okay. because I don't think the government is hell-bent to ensure that the churches remain closed forever. The possibilities are many, but the uh, players in that sector must themselves be ready to comply and give in. They, you, you cannot go to a small church, for example, and get 200 people who are singing, shouting, and uh, doing all the things that we do when we uh, 
uh, in these social places okay. and expect that we are not going to spread COVID. So that discussion we have formed a committee here in the ministry. Uh, the CS himself is spearheading it and uh, we were given just a few days to give an answer. But certainly there is pressure from the churches and we are going to have a protocol. If it's going to be opened, are they agreeable to the protocol that uh, the Ministry of Health Should is going to give them? I doubt, not this Saturday. Uh, okay. We just been given that work on Monday. Okay, the, sec yeah. the second clarification. Mm. Um, how soon will it be possible for someone who really needs to be in Mombasa to do so, for the flight of my road? That, that's, uh, I've already some addressed that, that uh, the Ministry of Transport is uh, at the moment uh, probably even finalized. How, what, what do we, because I will keep repeating until you get bored. It is about the Ministry of Health protocol. What is the protocol they will accept to have the airport open? And are the players ready to go by those protocols? If they say yes today, then they open tomorrow. There's a question uh, that came from IPOA yesterday, the Independent Policing Oversight Authority, and they are saying that uh, since the curfew was in, enforced uh, sometimes 26th of March, if I'm not mistaken, there have been 21 cases of killings that are being investigated. 15 of them have already been confirmed. What's your say on this? Uh, this what has become police brutality and using excessive force to contain such kind of situations? First, I want to say the government, this ministry, we as the management or managers of this ministry condemn and uh, do not support any police brutality. That must always be understood. That whenever there is a police brutality, there are two institutions that people must support. One is IPOA, as you have said, and the other one, because IPOA have the tools to punish every uh, police officer who uses excessive force while enforcing the law. The second one is uh, what we call internal affairs unit. They are uh, headquartered at uh, KCB Towers in Upper Hill. And uh, we have an anonymous reporting system where you can report a case. We have a USSD uh, code. We have a, a website. You can do, there are various ways of reporting anonymous police brutality. And I can tell you, out of the 105,000 police officers that we have, we keep disciplining, we keep sacking people who, uh, police officers who violate their own uh, protocols. Mm -hmm. And uh, we expect, statistically, out of one or 5,000 police officers, there will be good ones, there will be bad ones, and the bad ones are punished. But I always want to remind people that it is these police officers that have kept our country safe, and we must not condemn them wholesale because of behavior of a few. But coming to citizen responsibility, and this is where Kenyans don't want to hear, and we will continue saying it until they hear, is that... We have been told, be home at 7. If you're home at 7, you won't meet any police who will subject you to any brutality. We have been told, don't do this, wear face masks and all this. So sometimes we must also ask, what is our responsibility and what are these circumstances leading us to be in contact with police? It is because, first and foremost, we are breaking some law. But there are those ones who unfortunately find themselves on the side, uh, the wrong side of law because of circumstances. Yeah, you are late in traffic, you are not home at seven, but you are on your way home. Mm -hmm. Police are human beings, these are our people. But there is that person who at 7.30 is found in, hidden, locked behind a bar drinking. Do you want the treatment to be the same? There is a person who has by circumstances found themselves on the wrong side of the law and they can explain themselves. But there is this person who has planned the whole day to break the law. How do you deal with them? So we must also take responsibility where we are wrong and where police are wrong. We must take responsibility and punish them. But I urge my fellow Kenyans not to think that uh, it is just police who have a responsibility to ensure law is obeyed. We have personal responsibility. Please be home at seven. You won't find police 
please wear a nose mask. You won't yes. find police. Please don't uh, go violating rights of others. You won't find police. But when you are violating, and then they'll come to some and say police are being bribed. Yet, you are bribing because you have violated a law and you want a safer way out. You tempt them. And you know, like the, the, the good prayer of the Bible says, do not put us into temptations. Even God knows that uh, when you put a human being into temptation, you are putting him in a very awkward position. Please, let's obey the law and never put police into the temptation of asking you for a bribe. But uh, P.S., there's a story that is, um, was trending yesterday and the previous day of uh, a man in Madare, understandably a homeless person that was shot dead again claimed by police officers. I don't know if you've seen that story and what would be your comment? I, I haven't uh, had details about it. I've uh, just had it uh, trending like you have. And uh, obviously for us as the uh, interior, uh, every uh, case that is brought before us, whether it is uh, fabricated or whether it's real, we attend to all of them. A case like that, if true, and if it's uh, actually executed by a police officer, he will be subjected to the due process of law, without doubt. Okay. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much for yeah, your time. Thank you very much, Sam. And we hope to hear good news. Uh, I am getting very curious uh, what is it you have been denied because you are really pressurizing on the good news. Mm -hmm. And um, I've also seen a small clip of uh, what men will do if uh, the curfew is lifted. Yes. And um, uh, my final word is to assure Kenyans that government is not doing this because they don't en want Kenyans to enjoy life. We too would want to do what those people in the video are doing. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have COVID around. We must behave responsibly. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Karanja Kibijo. He's the Principal Secretary in TFS. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Okay.